But <clears throat> the very important thing that I have to mention here is that you cannot forget this name, brothers, Zayd ibn Thabit. This is the name you should know, and you should know everything about the Sahabi, because every time we read Quran, you know, we should think about him, because he was the main person in charge of this, and we owe a lot of, uh, you know, um, uh, gratefulness, tremendous debt to him, um, what he did. So let's talk a little bit about who this Sahabi was and why did Sayyidina Umar and Sayyidina Abu Bakr choose him as the person to compile the Quran. There are a lot of reasons. Uh, a brief history about him, you know, uh, he was born in the third year of prophethood and when Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam came to uh, Medina, Hijra, he was about 11 years at that time and what amazing thing happened was that uh, he at a very, a very young age of 11 years, who is 11 years here? You're 11? MashaAllah. So uh, that age, he memorized 17, uh, 17 surahs. And uh, he recited in front of Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and the Prophet was impressed by him. I mean, it's, recitation is different kinds, but his recitation was like really super. And Prophet was uh, impressed by him. And he was not only a hafiz of Quran later on, but he was also very good in writing and reading. And uh, in fact, when he was like about uh, 13 years old, what happened was, what happened at that time? the Battle of Badr. So he was like very enthusiastic. I'm, I'm going to go in Battle of Badr, participate with Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. But uh, Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said that, no, you're, you're too young, you can't go. You're not even 15 yet. But, uh, so he was very disappointed, but he wanted to serve Islam. And, and also same thing happened with Battle of Uhud as well. But finally he got an opportunity in the Battle of Khandaq, 6th, 7th is around that time. And uh, he he was one of the participants there and Prophet Muhammad from that time allowed him. <clears throat> and also, uh, he was also not only a hafiz of Quran but he was very good in recitation of Quran and he's also famous for knowing this laws of inheritance as well. And most important thing that is that, you know, uh, he was like very close neighbor of Prophet Muhammad and he was also nominated as the official person who would write of who would write for Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So it wasn't just Quran. Many things. Whenever there was a time to write letters to, for example, non-Muslims or kings or whoever, he would call Zaid ibn Sabit radiallahu to write it. And in fact, Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam told specifically to Zaid ibn Sabit that, O oh Zaid, learn for me the writing of the Jews. Learn Hebrew. I want you to learn it so that you can communi we can communicate with those people, you, you can read the letters of what they are sending in. So he said that specifically for the, uh, for the Hebrew uh, to Zayed and also the Syriac language is also recorded in the books. So whenever a verse used to reveal, he would immediately go and um, call upon Zayed ibn Thabit radiallahu anhu and he would say, you know, just bring your ink and pen, I want to dictate to you. And that was one of the reasons why, because he was his neighbor, very close, right? So a verse was revealed and immediately he would ask him to come and write for him. <clears throat> so the reason again why Sayyidina Abu Bakr and uh, Umar, they chose Zayd ibn Thabit, first of all, because he was well known <coughs> that he was the primary scribe of the Prophet Muhammad and also he was Hafid al-Quran, he was not just normal person, he knew Quran A to Z very well. And also he was very young and you know when, in, 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 when you are in your youth, your memory is very sharp, right? So that, that's why and, and, and all the other sahaba, famous sahaba, they were like in their 50s and 60s, so he was very young at that time. And, <clears throat> so, and also the most important thing, however, I would say that as I said before, Whenever in Ramadan, Jibreel Salam would uh, recite to Prophet Muhammad or Prophet Muhammad would recite to him, at that time, Zaid ibn Thabit anhu, would be there present listening to the recitation. From A to Z again, he would sit there and listen. There was no other Sahaba witnessing that fact. He wouldn't see Jibreel Salam, but he would see Prophet Muhammad reciting every single verse to Jibreel Salam. And also, it's just not the Qur'an's uh, hifth, he was very, very knowledgeable person. So that is the reason all this, uh, these good qualities of him 
they decided that Zaid ibn Thabit is the best, most qualified person to take up on this job. And uh, don't get confused with uh, Zaid ibn Harith. He's also a very famous figure. Who was Zaid ibn Harith? <laughs> the, uh, the, the freed slave of Prophet Muhammad He used to treat him as his son, very close. He used to live with him. But this was different. Zaid ibn Thabit, he is an Ansari. He is from Medina. First of all, when the Sayyidina Abu Bakr radiallahu and Umar approached him that, you know what, we decided that you will compile the Qur'an now. But when Zayed ibn Thabit radiallahu anhu, when he heard that, he said that, you know, you know, obviously this task is such an enormous task. It's, you know, it's a huge thing. It's an honor, of course, all right, but this is a very, very uh, critical task. And he said many times that, he said, by Allah, if they had ordered me to move one of the mountains from its place, it would have been very easy for me to do that than what they are telling me to do. Because it is not a simple thing to do. You are taking, you know, in charge of uh, compiling all the, the, the speech of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And if you make a mistake, obviously you know how heavy it would be in his heart. So he, he was very, very difficult for him. And, uh, but obviously, first of all, he knew Quran, everything, right? He could himself have compiled it by himself from Surah Al-Fatiha until Surah Al-Nas, but he took a different style. In fact, he made uh, Sayyidina Umar announce in, in the masjid that he, whoever has some verses of Quran, bring it to uh, Zaid ibn Thabit and he will write, start compiling it in the form of a book. So, the, he is, uh, Zaid ibn Thabit said, I'm going to put some conditions. If people meet these conditions, then okay, then they can come to me and they can, uh, uh, I can write it down from them. So what were these conditions that were set by him? Most important thing he said, I need two people. If there's just one person, no, it's, it's not going to fit. Obviously he's the third person, right? So he knows everything. So I, I need two people and obviously I need upright people, not like a munafiq or something known for a very bad deeds or not upright character. I need upright people well known in the community of being very pious. And also, this is very important, direct learnings. If somebody comes and said, hey, I know Quran, but if they will be asked like, where did you learn this from? They would say, I learned it from so and so sahaba. Then he said, you don't fulfill the condition. You should have listened it directly from Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Directly not indirectly and written copy you should have something written with you okay some form of proof basically again he knew every everything of quran but he still resorted to the conditions because he wanted to make sure there was not a single mistake at all there's no possibility obviously he was so intelligent and genius there would be no mistake by himself but uh, he still this as i said this task was so so difficult for him that he wanted to go extra step <clears throat> so there's one, one story that is mentioned. So all these Sahaba would bring verses to him. He started compiling and everything. And after all people came, he noticed that, you know, I, I know few verses. Nobody brought any verses to me. Uh, I, I don't have people, so I cannot write it down. But he knew that, you know, he knows every, every verse. So he said there were two verses missing from Surah Tawbah. Two verses, the last verses basically, 128, 129, also called Surah Al-Bara. So it, this was missing. So what happened? There was another Sahabi with the name, uh, Khuzayma ibn Thabit. Same last name, was not related, but his name was Khuzayma ibn Thabit. So he had these verses. He had these verses. So he met all these conditions. He had a written copy. He had upright character obviously and he learned directly from Prophet Muhammad but does this fulfill the condition you need one more right you need he said two two people yeah I'm gonna I'm gonna talk about it yeah you're okay <laughs> um, so but that was accepted as a valid evidence and he included it in the list of verses and compilation was 
uh, completely done. But why did he do that, Zayd ibn Thabit radiallahu Why? Because there is a story with it. Khuzayma ibn Thabit radiallahu was not an ordinary sahaba. He had a very special status. So why? what special status did he have? What happened was, once upon a time, Prophet Muhammad sallallahu was buying something in the market, like a horse or something. And uh, he was, uh, he was asking this, buying this from a non-Muslim. And after, uh, after that he bought it, this uh, non-Muslim businessman, he like rewarded, he's like, uh, I don't know about this transaction. I don't know we, that we traded. So he basically cheated. So there was like, uh, people started to gather, like, why, why is this argument happening? And people were asking, do you have any evidence, Prophet Muhammad Sallam, that you know, this guy traded from you? And all of a sudden, uh, Sayyidina Khuzayim Ibn Sabit radiallahu comes and says, I'm a witness, I saw this transaction happening. So, Prophet Muhammad later asked him, how did you witness when you were not there? So, Khuzayma ibn Thabit radiallahu replied, that Ya Rasulullah, uh, I have believed in what you have brought. I have not seen Allah, I have not seen the heavens, I have not seen any of the ghayb that you mentioned. And for me to for me to just believe that you have just did the small horse transaction is nothing. So you see, you know, uh, when we say La ilaha illallah, shadu la ilaha illallah, shadu anna Muhammad Rasulullah, what do we say? We are basically testifying, right? Did we see Allah? I mean, none of us have seen Allah, but we say the highest level of statement that we can say, highest assurity. Uh, we witness that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the only God. There's no God, uh, there's no deity worthy of worship. So this is the thing, you know, that you... Um, with so much surety that you say that this had happened, this Prophet Muhammad when he was involved in a transaction, the Prophet Muhammad says that that yes, that it has to be true. And when Sayyidina Muhammad, uh, Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu when he heard this, he said, from this day onwards, Khuzayma uh, ibn Thabit radiallahu anhu, his witness will be considered as two witnesses, a special status, a status that was not given to anybody. That, that time onwards, he was also known with the name Dhul Shahadatayn, Dhul Shahadatayn, a person of two witnesses, you know, a man whose witnesses will be equal to two witnesses. So now you see that's what happened here in the story. So he was satisfying the very first condition. He represents two people. So that is the story behind it. And again, you have to remember these names, brother, uh, Zayd ibn Thabit radiallahu anhu and Khuzayma ibn Thabit and all the people involved in compilation of Quran. So uh, we, we can end from here. You, you want to know those two verses of the Quran? Should I recite it? Or? I'll just read the translation, shall we? Uh, it, it says, There has certainly come to you a messenger from among yourselves. Grievous to him is what you suffer. He is concerned over you and to the believers is kind and merciful. The next verse it says, But if they turn away, O Muhammad, say, Sufficient for me is Allah. There is no deity except Him. On Him I have relied, and He is the Lord of the Great Throne. <laughs> that was the verse that you are talking.